Welcome to the Empowered Spirit Show. This is your host, Terry Ann Hyman. I'll explore the connection to the human spirit in a way that helps to navigate your life, including crisis. I am passionate about helping you to open up to your intuition and the metaphysical world of spirit to find your confidence in your own inner guidance. Take a pause, be inspired, learn ways to show up focused, centered, and more dynamic in your everyday life. Welcome back to the Empowered Spirit Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. As this podcast goes to air, we're moving through lots of cosmic forces, shifts, changes, planets turning direct, and the waning of the moon. Lots of changes in the air and in our country. As I record this episode, I'm not certain of how the election will turn out, but what I do hope for and pray is a return to compassion, honoring the truth, honoring the sacred elements, a more inclusive healthcare system, and a higher vibration of peace to be reestablished. Humanity is going through a major evolution, and there's infinite possibilities out there, no matter what, to make changes and reach for something greater. Transformation is a natural part of life, an important component of human evolution. It is something that is unavoidable, inevitable, and yes, it can be manageable when you learn to trust your inner guidance. Our circumstances, our needs, our behaviors must therefore naturally change and evolve alongside these cycles of life, or we risk undermining our personal levels of happiness and fulfillment. When your spirit and behaviors are in harmony with these rhythms, you begin to flow through the many shifts and transitions a little more effortlessly. When you resist these natural rhythms, you sell yourself short and consequently struggle with the conditions that life throws your way. As you tune into all the signs around you, you can begin to understand what you need to do to balance the body, mind, the emotions, and the spirit, which will then generate a healthy state of being. Without this literacy of your spiritual nature, stress and anxiety, overwhelm, and even depression can set in. You can feel isolated and alone and far away from the connection to your spirit. Can you look around right now and find the signs to help you know what to bring back into balance, what to open up to, and what to let go of? Some of the signs can be simple but overlooked. You need to be present. And it's time to take action, time to move forward, noticing what is working and what isn't. It does require trust, trusting your inner guidance, your spirit to know. Change your thoughts shift your energy because your energy is the only thing you can control right now. If you're a strong, passionate woman who is ready to take charge of her life and let go of the stories running around inside of your head, let's talk. Warning, this work just may change your life. It can seriously improve your body, your mind, and your spirit. Side effects, yes. (laughs) You may just see yourself and others as they really are. You may experience loss of excess baggage, resulting in major life changes. You may become the person you were really meant to be. Schedule a practical spirituality breakthrough session with me, and let's see if my private mentoring, the Empowered Spirit Program, is a fit for you. My clients are saying they are noticing the ways in which they are so much better at handling their energy. They aren't taking on other people's stuff, nor letting unwanted thoughts and self-talk stick around for too long. They're beginning to step forward with their sole purpose with confidence. They're opening up their businesses. They're expanding the work they're doing, and they're growing with such greater confidence. When you learn to tap into this vibration for you and lead through this alignment, you will send out a frequency, your energy, which helps you to attract these changes in your life that you are wanting to make. In today's episode, I talk with Cindy Dale about her new book, Energy Healing for Trauma, Stress, and Chronic Illness. We talk about the subtle energy body, stress, and how this is a major factor in our overall health and wellness, trauma, where it actually originates in most cases, and the energy of the pandemic. Before we get into the episode, let's take a moment to pause and breathe. And as a special bonus, Cindy will offer us a meditation with a visualization of energetic crystals to start us off. So let us begin. So acknowledge your own spirit. As you breathe deeply, 
know that every time you inhale, you're acknowledging your own indivisible, beautiful, essential self. And that every time you exhale, you're giving permission for your own essence to release from you that which you're finished with, that which is not yours, and that which you're ready to let go of. And then settling into that sense of your true self, your essential self, acknowledge that you're surrounded by guiding and helping spirits. Feel how happy they are that you're calling upon them, that you're willing to open to their good graces, to their love and healing powers. And then surrender to whatever it is you call the greater one, the greater spirit, the holiness. And in that place, knowing yourself as the beloved of the oneness, breathe deeply again and allow your spirit, the guardians, the oneness to construct for you any invisible but very real micro crystals that in your energy field will provide you protection, ease, and also draw to you whatever it is that is highest for you as your day or your evening goes on. And you might actually get a sense of the guides, for instance, literally constructing these invisible, but very, very solid and real subtle energy crystals, almost like elves at play or the trolls bringing crystals out of the good earth, out of the stars, out of the sun, out of the middle of the air and customizing them so that the codes or the programs in each of these millions and millions of small, shiny, multicolored crystals are the ideas exact to your needs. You might sense these crystals, feel them. You might see them, maybe even hear the hum of them, even as they're being cast into your energetic field, close to your body, farther away from your body, wherever it is they need to be, 360 degrees around. And there they are, blinking, shining, twinkling, inviting, and allowing your being. Breathe deeply. Reaffirm again your own spirit, the assisting spirits, the greater spirit, and your presence in the midst of these shining orbital crystals. And when you're ready, just simply open your eyes and return to your everyday consciousness. Thank you so much. Thank I can you. feel those crystals just like coming all through and the spirit lifts. Thank you. Cindy Dale is an internationally renowned author, speaker, healer, and business consultant, and the author of 27 books about energy medicine, intuition, and spirituality. In addition, she's worked with over 70,000 clients and presented hundreds of seminars and workshops across the Americas and in Russia, England, Wales, Amsterdam, Iceland, Costa Rica, Belize, Morocco, Peru, Scotland, and more. She is a favorite teacher and healer for China, leading in-person and online classes. Cindy graduated from the University of Minnesota, summa cum laude, with a degree in English and a minor in philosophy. She also holds a fifth degree Reiki certification, the highest of distinctions in this healing area. Cindy currently teaches a certificate level program at Normandale College in Minneapolis, Minnesota, through which adult students earn an accredited certificate in energy medicine. As well, she teaches a year-long apprenticeship program through her own company, Essential Energy, assisting individuals with developing their natural, intuitive, and healing gifts. These courses are added to the dozen she teaches locally and worldwide in energy medicine 
and spiritual healing. So let's welcome Cindy to the show. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. I am very excited and honored to talk to you. You've done such amazing work. You've written so many books. I have, I don't know if it's your oldest book or not, but your subtle body, right? I have the coloring book. I have your chakra books. I have so many books. And now your newest book, Healing for Trauma, Energy Healing for Trauma, Stress, and Chronic Illness. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Isn't that a spot on issue during this time? <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. It really is. And before we jump into the book, I would just like to give our listeners a little history. Like, how did you ever get started in this work? Well, it wasn't like it was a career goal. I mean, <laughs> I grew up in a white, wonder bread, Norwegian, Lutheran family. But I was one of those kids who could see things. I saw colors around people. I heard spirits. I kind of knew what was going to happen. I remember going to my first funeral when I was maybe three, four years old and seeing the woman's spirit bouncing around the room. And it was confusing to me, like who's in the coffin and you know who's <laughs> bouncing around out there. Um, I shut it down, but when I started therapy as a client with the litany of issues, OCD, compulsive this, compulsive that, when I was about 19, 20, I had a therapist who said, you know, you're not only all these, uh, you know, kind of billable issues, you're psychic. And, you know, then the, the, the word took me. And I was able to go study and learn from shamans and healers in different countries. And honestly, then one thing leads to another. I mean, it's one of those, the paths called me. I was a bit hesitant because who wants to, when I was getting into this, like who wants to say that they're a psychic healer? We didn't even use the word energy, which is much more viable right now. <laughs> but right. I've been doing it for almost 30 years and I just love doing energy healing work. I love it. Yeah. You know, I moved back to Birmingham back in 2011. And even here in Birmingham, people had no idea what I was doing. And this was only 10 years ago. So I can imagine as early as you had started doing it, you know, and even now people still don't understand the subtle body. They don't understand. They can't see it. They don't understand it. And I like to talk about like, kind of like your cell phones, like we don't see all those things going into our cell phones, but boy, do we rely on it. Yeah, exactly. Like electricity. I mean, you yeah. don't really see it going through the walls, but if you turn it on, like you turn on your intuition, if you engage with it, there you are. I mean, and you need to be in the light, right? <laughs> Rather yeah. than dark. So it's sort of on each person. I think these days, once they learn that there is such a thing as a subtle body, as an energy process, and that we're mainly made out of invisible energy, learn about it because it's going to explain yourself to yourself. Yeah, I agree. And your book does such a great job of explaining the subtle body. Yeah. After listening to it, it's like, oh my gosh, like, why don't people believe this? Yeah. Well, you know, I have a 21 year old, he's a college baseball pitcher. And I do have to say his friends now believe in it, not necessarily because they look at diagrams and they're never going to pick up one of my books, but they figured out when Gabe's weird mother helps them, <laughs> think that's better. Like, I don't know what you just did, but this works. Visualizing this color, it really works. Or I can really feel myself way out here. And if I don't take in the negativity, like I, I pitch better, I hit better. So I, I mean, sometimes you just have to be convinced by doing it enough that you see there's results. Yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. One of my clients, she's great. And people thought she was crazy at first. I mean, even putting her in the hospital at first, but there was nothing wrong. They, you know, drug testing the whole bit, but she had all these abilities and she would carry crystals everywhere. And her son plays, I think it's soccer. And so now they're like, all right, where are your crystals? Bring them out, bring them out. So yeah, I mean, once we start seeing results, right? And learning. And I think that's part of it. It's learning and putting priorities. One of my clients just texted me, texted me this morning, like I haven't put priority in this right? And that's what we need to do. Yeah, I, we do. Well, I mean, one of the scientific uh, statistics is that you take a physical object, 99.99999 dot, dot, dot percent of that is invisible. So that means we are too. And I think sometimes it's overwhelming for people because being, you know, kind of mainly invisible, just, we're just made out of fields, oscillating fields of light and sound. That's it. And that can be pretty scary and overwhelming because it's sort of like when you first learn that and you go out to a shopping mall, you get really dizzy. It's like, whoa, <laughs> but the whole point of learning is to be able to direct energy. It's to be able to figure out what messages you're sending into the world and what you're picking up and making part of your life and 
lot of that stuff, you don't want it in your body. You don't want to have it be dictating who you are and what you're going to be thinking about. Yeah, for sure. One of the things I talk about is like, is this your energy or is it somebody else's energy and really learning how to do that? And we can learn. And that's a beautiful thing. People have to think, you know, like I have to be gifted or have to inherit this gift, but no, we train and we learn, which is really amazing. It really is. So now your book, your newest book, because you've written what, about 27 of them? Yeah, that's a lot of books. <laughs> that is a lot of books. And that is just so awesome. I've written one and I'm trying to get the second one out, but so it's just awesome. Yes, for sure. And especially my favorite topics, but energy healing for trauma, stress, and chronic illness. Very important today. Yeah. And one of the things that jumped right at me was stress. And I know stress is important, but I don't feel like the American population feels or the world population anyway, feels that stress is a big deal. It's like, oh, let me just eat better. Let me go exercise and I'll deal with it. But wow. We really under engage with the criticalness of figuring out what stresses and what has stressed us and what to do about it. I mean, most of us are actually locked into some kind of old trauma, whether that trauma be what we went through in childhood, I would say other lifetimes, uh, we absorb from our families, or now here we are in the middle of a lot of global and local crises. So almost everybody is stressed out. I remember forever ago, uh, the statistic that went through the 12-step programs was 97% of all families are dysfunctional. And the other statistic that pretty much matches that is 97% of all medical office visits are stress-related. Not even just, I have an illness, I think I have an illness, or my stomach hurts, or I'm depressed, or I'm anxious, or this or that, or the other thing. Because once we start getting stressed out and we don't know how to turn it off, it rigidifies, we get stuck, and then we're gonna get ill, whether it be emotional, or physical, or even spiritual. Stress, st trauma is just stress that gets stuck in the system. That's that's what trauma is. So think about how many traumas most of us are holding in our bodies at this point, because think of what we've all gone through in our lives. Yeah, trauma is stress that gets stuck in the body. And then we cover it up, and then we cope, and then years later, <laughs> for most of us, years later, it starts to come out and manifest in so many different forms, yeah. And even sometimes when we've done healing, I went through a horrible divorce, betrayal, the whole bit, you know, thinking, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. I was on a podcast interview with Debbie Sibler up in New York. And all of a sudden it was like, oh my gosh, there's still more to heal. There's still more coming out of me. And it's really amazing. It takes a long time. I know. And some of the toughest stuff that I find in my own life is that pre-verbal. And there's some very interesting studies that, that are actually showing that most of the diseases, mental slash emotional, you know, psychological or physical that we get when we're older started in the womb. Like the, the viruses, the microbes, what our mom was going through, how what our dad was going through impacted our mom, that environment. There's almost always these direct, you know, dot, dot, dots from in the womb experiences to what you catch, what you go through, what you can cope with or not cope with later in your life. So we're, we're stress machines. I mean, reacting to stress is not a bad thing, okay? It's a survival instinct. When, when I get stressed, when you get stressed, when any of us get stressed, the first thing that happens is actually there's a hormone called osteocalcin that's produced in the bone marrow. Now in the subtle world, the bone marrow has to do with our ancestry mm -hmm. and what we inherit and, our, and the emotions we inherit from our ancestors too. So our bone marrow decides that something needs to be dealt with, like fire, fire alarm, fire alarm, then our adrenals go, then our heart goes, then our immune system, you know, kind of goes a little out of whack. Then our microbiome starts producing, you know, kind of the stuff in the gut that makes it hard to digest. And, but it starts in the bone marrow, which I just think is fascinating because it is the place inhabited by what we've inherited emotionally and genetically too. Yeah, it is fascinating. And I don't know how much we've really looked at that. However, like, it's like, if you think about it, like when people go to remains and stuff, this is how they like determine who people are, like through the teeth and the skull and the bones. So it does make sense 
that it comes through. And then you talk about, you know, like what you've inherited from your parents and, you know, how people come in and go out. So, yeah, and I actually work in the Karshik Records, too. So we generally go all the way back. And then there's this little timeline that we cross back into past lives. And it's just it's so effective and it's so amazing. And sometimes I don't know if I really quite understand what I'm doing, although I've been trained, but it's fascinating. And the healings that come forward are just fascinating. And so there is a faith in me. There is a belief like, OK. Just do the work. I trust it. And seeing the results, it's incredible. Seeing people go forward, seeing people break habits. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. And having the faith. And I'm like you too, when I'm working with a client, we're usually just kind of drifting back in time. I worked with a woman from China and we had an interpreter and she had uh, Hashimoto's and a number of other autoimmune disorders. Worked on it here, worked on it there. She's worked on it for years and years and years. We went back to what I would call the original soul wound. Like here we are in source, whatever word you want to use, the heaven, the source, the oneness. Then we peek our head out because you know, it's sort of boring floating around in heaven, like <laughs> what are you going to do all the time, right? So let's go into the manifesting reality. Let's do some cool things. Let's make more love. Let's use our abilities. And then bam, I mean, we all get gotten somewhere where we just don't know how to interpret this other soul ramming us or being jealous of us or us being jealous, or we think the creator turned away from us or whatever your language is, that sometimes I go all the way back there to when did the soul, the part of us that travels through time and space, first get the idea that there's sort of something wrong with us, you know, that we're not worthy. Hmm. Yeah, it is. It's quite fascinating and bring those imprints through and to the knowledge that we can bring through the wisdom that comes forward. That is like part of your own self, you know, and I've seen it where people, you know, long, long, long lines of, you know, healing work and whatever form that takes. And then in this lifetime being stuck. And then once you clear it, it's like amazing what comes forward. It really is. Yeah, definitely. So your book is amazing. It's like a, a manual, a Bible, however you want to look at it, because it has tons of information, gives you tons of guides, tons of, just really just about the chakra system. And you work with the 10 chakra system, which is 10 or 11, 10? 12. 12, oh. okay, 12. Yeah, let's correct that. 12 <laughs> chakra system, right? And most people kind of start with the seven and then they start to go into the advanced chakras and that's fascinating. And so you lay all this out in diagrams and then just really explaining it. It is quite fascinating. And then the thing I really do want to applaud you for is that you do talk about the pandemic and offer energetic ways to really protect and work with it. Yeah, very good. I got the book back to do my final edits right, pretty much right after America lockdown. Hmm. And, you know, I'm still in the crew going, I hope I have enough toilet paper and canned beans. And my son was home from college and he's an athlete. So I'm trying to find weights for the garage because that was the end of parking the cars in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes all the other baseball guys going, oh, cool. We're going to spend our summer here. So I'm doing all that stuff. And I got my edits back and I'm like, I was told we, you have 16 pages you can fill for the pandemic. I was so happy because I've been working on what are the energetics, what are the physicalities and the subtle energetics of the virus? How can you help protect yourself? What's your best attitude if you think you're around it, if you pick it up? Uh, you know, kind of how do we see this? What are some of the issues that it might be triggering in individuals? But it's an enormous question mark and it can also lead to looking at you know kind of what can we gain from this i am not discounting the pain and the horror and the losses and the deaths and the need to say you know we're just going to get more lessons like this because we're just you know we're in out of control climate we're not looking at ourselves like we're all on the same planet. We think those territory lines on the map really mean something. Birds cross right over them, so do viruses. So on every level, I try to give some words of wisdom and healing advice about the virus and the pandemic in general too. 
Yeah, and you really do. You really go in, you describe what it looks like, you describe what the coating is, you describe how it comes in the body, and then you offer ways in which to protect the energy fields, which I think is really important. And I agree too. I'm not kind of downplaying anybody that's been sick or anybody that has it. And, you know, I think we have to look at the whole picture too. And again, going back to stress, stress is going to lower our immune system and we need it. At, we need our immune system to be working right now and even greater than we ever have. So all very important. Yeah. Yeah, because it is all about stress and you can alleviate the effects of a virus like this or anything that you might go through. Obviously, do your vitamin D, your vitamin C, eat right, sleep, do this and that. But if we're holding old trauma, that's zapping our energy. That's already reducing our immune system by, depends on what you're dealing with, but up to 60 to 70%. I mean, somebody who was sexually abused or physically violated or witnessed that in childhood, you're already set up for heart disease, cancer, autoimmune disorders, uh, all kinds of emotional challenges. Then here comes a virus like this that's like, I'm not going to stop at the boundaries. <laughs> I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Like there's a host. And so this is a call to deal with what's inside of us as well as take care of ourselves on the outside. Yeah, take care of our mother earth for sure as well. Definitely. Yeah, and so there is so many factors that are coming in right now. And yeah, I know like when all this first locked down, like the quietness of the world and that giant pause, but then there's also the thing like, do we learn? <laughs> Have we learned, right? And so, yeah, I think that talking about the subtle body, talking about the way we work with all of our life experiences is really important. And one of the other things that you really really kind of exemplify in talking about like the work that you've done is like, this is not a one-time session. Come in for one time, you're going to feel great. This is like, let's do the work. Let's really dig in and then have yourself learn, you know, some of the tools that can keep you healthy. And it is a process, but it's something that needs priority in our lives. It is a process and it's not just a process of digging. I think sometimes people go, oh, it's so much work. And it is, <laughs> it's like, you know, sometimes people go, there's just these onion rings and skins. I like onion rings, <laughs> <laughs> the layers of the onion and there are, but every time you go down, it's like the crystal who you are can come up, right? And shine a little brighter. And you know, when you're shining brighter, I know, I know, you know, I know I'm more of who I really am now than I was a year ago. And certainly than I was 20 years ago or 30 years ago. And that's a reward right there. Yeah, I agree. And so sometimes the work can seem hard because we are going in there and we are, but we're crying and we're releasing, but Hey, I'm a crier. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with crying in my book because it is a big release. But the thing that does come out, just like you said, is we find that radiance lifts up and we find a greater part of who we are. And that's the reward. And we can learn, we don't have to stay stuck in the same place. And I think that, you know, part of what I know the pandemic showed me, cause I kind of went in, I pulled in, there was a few other things, the Kundalini world blew up and I was a big Kundalini student and that really hurt me, right? And so I kind of pulled in deeply. And then I found a little bit of my radiance wasn't there. I'd also been through a year of grieving for my mother who had passed on, right? And I'd spent five years work, you know, living with her. And so it really did pull me into this place of like really darkness inside of me. And like, where's my spirit? Where is my faith? Where is my light? And then realizing, wait, I know I have these tools. Like I know I need to lift that radiance and then started back in lifting up that radiance. But sometimes we have to do that. Sometimes we have to go into that shadow part, that dark part of who we are. And if we're not doing the work, that dark part can attach to the world at large, which right now there is a lot of that going on, wouldn't you say? <laughs> that's what we're seeing. We're seeing really our own human, mainly projections of the light and the dark out in the world, you know, and when you're not owning something that's in the shadows for yourself, it's awfully easy to see it kind of in something or somebody else as well. You know, there's a great book series. It's a junior high book series written a long time ago by a woman named Susan Cooper. It, they're young adult novels set in Wales and they're called The Dark is Rising. And I just keep thinking of that series while we're going through this, because in that series, which has cool King Arthur stuff and souls that uh, travel across time to represent the dark and represent the light and you, you know, souls that reincarnate and have to wake up to remember who they are to help defeat the dark whenever it's rising. One of the main themes is when the dark rises, so does the light. 
and you know this isn't about shadows we all have shadows but i think we do know inside of ourselves fundamentally what's right for us and what's wrong for us how we're supposed to behave versus how we're not supposed to behave i mean there's that old saying <clears throat> everything you need to know you learned in kindergarten kindergartens really already know they're not supposed to hit somebody on the head <laughs> <laughs> right. So we know more than we think we know. And this is that virus is saying, come on, get brave, go with what you know is right and start living it because otherwise we're just going to get surrounded by shadows. Yeah, for sure. And this has been several years of just stretching those boundaries, not having compassion for people, not showing the caring to mother earth and really stretching. And yeah, to me, it makes perfect sense. You know, I mean, I've talked to a lot of different people about it. It's like, is this like karmic energy coming forward? I just think it's an awakening. I think it's a learning process. And I like the way that you say that. Like, you know, it's like if we want to project all that darkness on everybody else, which is kind of what's happening out there in the world, we're not doing our own healing. We're not doing our own work. But when we can take responsibility and pull it back into us, we can start to see that shift in reality change. Yeah, and really shift the use of shaming, blaming, and those kind of, you know, kind of, I guess they're verbs, to be honest, because, well, like I teach a lot of classes in China. Now, obviously, it's on Zoom. And so here the virus gets released as China, everybody's blaming the Chinese, whatever the backstory is. These are true souls. The, the people I'm interacting with, they, they want help and healing, just like we want help and healing. What if there really weren't all these enemies? What if we really were on this planet and in some way we're all trying and striving, you know, kind of to let, you know, let enlightenment occur, whatever word would be used. Um, this is interesting because I did a conservative talk show not long ago. I, I'm not a conservative. And most people wouldn't guess that I would be <laughs> for a living. Um, it was a great interaction because what we agreed about is that there's invisible energies, there are forces involved in invisible energies, and we're all trying to awaken the light. I mean, we're on the same side if we could but view it that way and then shift our perceptions and then take self-responsibility too and say, what, what's the next best thing I can do? Yeah, I, I agree. Instead of getting caught in the drama and that projection of energy out there, sometimes people think it's the easier part. Oh, let me just like consume all the drama today. It's like, no, we can't. We really need to, especially now, especially this week or when this airs this past week, right? It's like, we really need to keep that force of energy high and just keep the intentions for the highest good out there. And it is very powerful. And I know there are a lot of people that look at me and go, are you kidding? You're telling me to do that and I'm going to be okay for the coronavirus. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I am. I had the virus. I had it in late February, early March. Now we hadn't locked down yet. I was traveling for baseball. So I was in all the cities that eventually had really high counts like a week after I traveled there. <laughs> all right. So I came home, nobody really knew what the symptoms were. And I'm like, I just don't feel good. Something's really off. Went to bed, woke up, aches, pains, this, that, the other thing. I didn't label it, you know, SARS-CoV-2. I didn't call it you know, by the name, I was like, this feels weird. I need to do my work around this. So I spent that day, um, you know, kind of visualizing light, uh, seeing if I had any emotions that had gotten triggered, dealing with the fact that I'd been eating too many potato chips when I was on the road for baseball, better not, you know, kind of keep that diet going. I mean, being really honest with myself, my symptoms were gone within probably a day for the most part. I'm not saying you're, you, sh you should feel shamed if you come down with it and it really strikes you. I think it helped that I could use the placebo effect. I didn't have to have a label. And I also know my body really well and I know how to access subtle energy. I had you know, the antibodies later. Um, but I think it helps if you can get enough distance from what's in mass hysteria, from what's in the herd to just say, I'm gonna sit where I'm sitting and doing what I can do and call on the help I know how to call on, which are, you know, lots of times they're spiritual. It's spiritual help. 
I agree to that. <laughs> Definitely what I teach. And again, it's like people don't quite recognize what that means. I mean, so often people are like, oh, that's religion, especially here I am in the Bible Belt. It's like, no. And I am pretty verbal lately, especially about like, I'm really speaking to the spiritual, not religious population because we all need this work. And then we get into the subtle energies. But I, I think it's really important. I actually, and you actually talked about this in your book, after I lost my mother, I actually had a lot of asthma which was actually ancestral energy as well through my father and all, but I ended up with the grief and had asthma and I had bronchitis. And then it was like one thing after another. And then I started to feel better, better, better. And then I remember right before the end of the year thinking, why is everybody getting this, this, this respiratory thing? I remember picking that up. Like, why is this already happening? I didn't know what it was either, but I noticed there was a time right then that went right into the beginning of the year where there was a shift in me too. Like, this is a little different, but the same thing. It's like, we use our tools. I do a lot of Reiki and just keep working with the energetic body. And I think like tools like that, like, even if you don't quite know, especially as much as you do, and you can't visualize and see all those cords and everything, but you use the modalities that keeps your energy flowing. And to me, that's just priceless right now for what's going on. Yeah. And it can be as easy as just knowing you are a spirit. That's what being spiritual is. It's just recognizing I'm an essence of, I'm a spark of whatever you call the source, the divine, the God, the, you know, I'm a source, you know, that's my source. So you just affirm your own spirit and you know you're surrounded by helping spirits. And again, whatever word you use for what you call the goodness, you connect in there, that will cleanse you right there, you're in a cleansing uh, process and path. Mm, I love that simplicity of it because it is true. And lots of times we don't even acknowledge, you know, spirit to spirit who we are for sure. Yeah. So I do think it's really important that we work with the subtle body. And as you said, even in your book, like offering the techniques for working with the, with the virus and really keeping your system clean and then seeing what else it goes to, you know, when you do have the stress, where is it coming from? When you do have some trauma, have I really healed it? And really continually making it a daily habit. I think it's really important. I think that that can help each and every one of us to really kind of get back to who we are. Yeah. Yeah. And the daily part's really important because I know for all of us, it's easy to get caught up in the spin, you know, of our own lives, but also what's out there. <laughs> it's like, that's just spin. <laughs> that's not, I mean, if you spin around, you're going to lose your light, your basic energy. You're just not going to have enough energy to go forward either. I totally agree. And it is so easy to spin around. And I have to admit lately, I've been a little bit like, okay, let me check the morning news. Let me see. It's like, okay, you've got to turn this off. You know, in between meditating and yoga, you know, I was like, okay, just turn it off. We don't need to see it. Right. And so it is easy to get caught in that habit, you know, and, and get caught up with the media. But right now that's kind of the last thing we all need, you know, and really just taking the time and finding whether it's in the morning, afternoon, or evening, or three times a day or whatever, finding the time to bring it into your personal habit. Right. And I think there's some fun ways to do it, you know, working through visualization, working through meditation. And now there's so many different energy modalities. I just don't see why everybody, <laughs> okay, why everybody doesn't have at least one or two tools that they can use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can go with your strengths. If you're verbal, you can download Yoga Nidra, you know, and just listen to the soothing music or chanting, or if you're visual, like you're saying, you know, just, just put really pretty colors in your environment and stare at them every so often. I'm very physical. So I get up every morning and run my dogs at a dog park. I don't look at the emails. I don't look at the news. I just get them in the car and there we are. And I'm in a really good mood after that. So I'm buoyed. You know, I've done my earthing as they call it these days. I, I'm in Minnesota, so I'm not barefoot. <laughs> I mean, you, you really, you usually can't see anything but my nose because it's so cold here most of the time. Uh, but, you know, just getting outside and breathing can make a difference. Definitely. It, it really can. I know this weekend we were at a sweat lodge and medicine wheel and just really going deep into that, that energy of who we are. And it just felt so good. It's my medicine for sure to get out and do that. And then finding the many different ways. All right. So gosh, just so much to talk about and just really amazing work that's going on. And again, I, I love it because it really reconfirms all the work that I'm doing and how important it is to really add this into what we do on a daily basis. So what are your hopes for the book? What are your hopes? 
you know, I hope that people buy it and that it it gets paged through over and over again. So until the pages are underlined and wrinkled, because there are dozens of exercises in there. So beyond uh, learning how stress uh, interacts with you, how you interact with it, what it does to your body, your mind, and your soul, you can improve matters. And that's the aim of the book is to help give people tools to heal themselves and then to walk back in the world in a shinier way. Yeah. And I agree to that because you sent me the digital book and then I went and got it on audible and I'm thinking, you know what? I need this in hard copy. <laughs> I need to underline it and put sticky. So I definitely agree with that. Yeah. So who do you work with mostly? Anybody or... Anybody, yeah, it's really a, a broad range. I teach a lot of classes. And so that's almost my favorite thing to do is help people activate their own gifts and their own abilities. So I teach with the Shift Network and my own company and I work with people no matter what they're concerned. You know, I don't know if you find this, but there's, I think only really three main life areas. There's relationship, there's health and there's work slash purpose. So most of us have something going on in one or all of those areas at any given time. So I kind of help put them all together too. Yeah, I agree. That's when people come for readings, right? It's like, those are the three main questions they come for. So that's amazing. And then you have teaching, you have workshops, you have something coming up, I think I saw on your website. I do. I have uh, the Shift Network is a large company and I'm going to be teaching an advanced class through them. And people will also be able to get the initial class that starts, you know, very soon, like in the like, middle of November. I have a long apprenticeship program that I'm going to be starting in February of 21. That's like a seven, eight month study program. And then I have I teach at the local college. And you know what? Everything's on Zoom right now. So it's great. Anybody can take anything because you can like I am, sit in your basement and learn. Yeah. And I believe you're offering a free meditation for Corona on your website. Tell us about I that. I do. It's a free guided meditation. It's on my website, cindydale.com, spelled weird, C-Y-N-D-I, cindydale.com. And I, you got to give your name so you go on my mailing list and, you know, whatever. But um, it's a big, hefty guided meditation to help you know what the virus looks like from a physical point of view, from an intuitive point of view, how to zap it if it's in your energy field or in you and how to set up better boundaries. I use a kind of a, an interesting study uh, from scientists who are growing crystals right now to help people visualize crystals going in their energy field to keep themselves safe. Yeah, I really like that energetic crystals. Yeah. And then you feel all sparkly after I did actually download the meditation and do it. Yeah. You do. It's fantastic. I mean, scientists are growing crystals that that can now impact space and time. Some of the crystals you can code. So if something happens around you, you know, kind of like, oh, the virus is coming and we encode it subtly, but scientists do it in real life. You know, if some if the virus is anywhere near you, you put these uh, visualized crystals in your field, they'll just zap the energy of the virus. And time crystals, scientists are now growing those too um, in a laboratory. But again, you put those in a visualization sort of methodology in your field. Like you can just clean your field every minute or clean your field every hour. So program these energetic crystals, put them around you. They really work. I can tell you, I have not been sick since I did that. Nothing, not even a cold. Hmm. I love it. I love the idea because I, yeah, I teach crystals. I have crystals all around me, but the whole idea of energetic crystals. And I know even in the Kashuk records, like we like the energy of crystals comes through. So this is right in alignment with that. And again, I believe that like, this is why we need to learn this work. This is why, because you can sit here and listen to it, right? We can tell you about it, but it's really the practice. And once you start doing it, you do, like you said, you feel that, that like sparkle all around you and your vibration is lifted. And then you can go out into the world and feel so much better about what you're doing. And you get the downloads and your intuition grows stronger. And you have an ability just to really live your purpose and know, <laughs> know what that purpose is. And I think that's important too. And you're happier, <laughs> which is also needs to be underlined. It's so much, I get, I, I know we, we have to feel our fear, feel our anger, feel our, you know, sadness, all of it's important. And it's still okay to have happiness too. 
Yes. And I'm glad you said that because so often we think like, oh, everybody's suffering. We can't, but no, it is. It's really important. And I think, you know, like we take stress for granted. I think that, you know, really being able to be happy in this kind of world is very important. And again, it's a vibrational thing as well. Lifting that vibration for all those around. Definitely. Yeah. So here's the joy, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes, we definitely, we need that joy right now. We really do. And, you know, it's like even over as we move through this, you know, next couple of weeks and here we are in this country, it's like we need to keep that vibration high and we need to really shine the light, especially those that are doing it. It's like, don't get caught in the fear. Just keep it strong and, and continually keep it strong for all those around us. And that this work can come out even more. I was on a woman's summit um, and then we'll round this up, but I was on a woman's summit conference here in Birmingham. And I was actually very grateful to hear how many more of your corporate women are talking about mindfulness and now they're doing yoga more and they're actually talking about it. To me, that's a huge improvement for a lot of us. Yeah, for sure. I think that's very real. Doctors, chiropractors, corporate. My clients are just full of people, you know, coming from those ranks because they're not getting fed necessarily where they are or where they're working all the time. And they know that there's more. And so they go for the more, which, which is on each of us to do that. Yeah, definitely. And we need it because there's such a high rate of burnout and especially right now. And our health care system <laughs> needs to change for sure. Yeah. Working on it here in Birmingham. Definitely trying to get in the hospitals. We did great. in New York. We did when I was in New York, we, we got into some of the hospitals, which was really great. Yeah, for sure. So as we do go to round all of this up, how would you say, and we pretty much answered it, but I do like to come back to the theme of the show. How would you say the work that you're doing can help to empower the spirit? Uh, you know, the first and most important uh, answer is that it helps people recognize that they are a spirit. I, I mean, if you know you are a spirit, not that just you have a spirit, it's not like it's the shadow in Peter Pan, right? That's like drifting around and you try, have to try to catch it. You are a spirit. Your spirit is in your body, it's in your mind, it's in your soul, it's who you are. That alone, I think, opens us up to grace and the power of healing, but also our own wisdom. Opens us up to grace and the power of our own wisdom and healing. Beautiful, yeah. Well, thank you so much. I really have enjoyed our conversation. There's so much to gain from this book and from all the work and all the links will be in the show notes as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Loved thank it. you, enjoy your day, everybody. Yeah, to your spirit, namaste. Yes, everyone, is a spirit. This is their essential self. It is the sparkness of the oneness that we all carry within. When you open up to this energy and when you trust that thought, trust that spirit within you, there is faith, there is guidance to move forward, to heal and to find the highest light to shine for who you are. It is so important to work with the subtle energy system as Cindy is telling us. It's so important to recognize stress does need to be addressed on the subtle levels of the body. We can't just go and exercise more or eat better. We must work with our energy body. So check out Cindy's new book. It's amazing how much information is there. And if you'd like to learn more about your own energy system and have some guidance for that, schedule a practical spirituality breakthrough session, and let's see how my program can get you started on that path. Sending lots of love and light out to the world, holding that vibration for a greater consciousness to come forward for all humanity. Thanks again for listening. This is your host, Terry Ann Hyman. To your spirit, namaste. I have a masterclass coming up. It's how empaths can thrive during the holiday season. So important. Check it out. The links are in the show notes. Come join us. It's on Zoom. Get the link.